Hi everybody, Grandma Bev here from Life with Grandma Bev, and I am here with my daughter, Michelle Escalin, and we'll have a link to her channel down below. Well, a lot of you have said that they thought it'd be cool if we did a video of questions that you all have for us. So you have two generations here, 27 years apart. See, <laughs> see if we have things similar or we have difference of opinions. So I only got about eight questions from all of you. So I'll go over those. And then after that, we're gonna do the self-care in sex ed with these balloon cars. Now, you guys all seem to like these. I don't know about you, but... So those should be the really interesting ones to me. <laughs> if you uh, want to know why I'm facing a little bit away from her, yeah. it's because I've got my foot up, I, I hurt my ankle, and I'm icing it right now, and I've got Zelda on my lap. Right. Just in case you're wondering why yeah, I'm... she's got her foot. I'm not mad at her. I'm just... We did so much walking these last few days, going to all these different stores and stuff that... Uh, it swelled up. Yeah. So we'll get started. Now, question number one, and this is really putting her in a spot. <laughs> what was your favorite dish that your mom made? Now, I can say my mom made, uh, my mom, my favorite one was lasagna. And that's who I learned how to make it from. And she just got the recipe from the back of the golden grain noodles box so you uh want to pass this one or sorry <laughs> um so my favorite was her lasagna which was <laughs> the same recipe but also your cheesecake oh yeah which you also you got that from the back of a box too you said um yeah magazine actually uh um, i can't remember the name of what it was but it's one and i mean the thing is so ragged but i've still been using the same recipe well, that's very kind of you. What? Uh, I'll just say those two things. Oh, okay. Okay. This is for, well, for you, both of us. Real quick, you know, it's funny, though. I still make your cheesecake every year. Do you? See, and I every haven't year. because there's never anybody to eat it. No. <laughs> Except. <laughs> okay. How were you punished? For example, do you have time out, spanking, a talking to? You want to go first or do you want me to go first? I don't remember you punishing me. Did you? I tried. I remember my dad punishing me. Yeah. But wait I remember wait you. Wait till your father gets home. <laughs> but that was what I remember you saying. <laughs> wait till your father gets Same home. Words. I'd sit there worried about him coming home. And usually it was always at night when he came home. All right, lady. And he'd so, go right to bed. And my bedroom was right over the, the garage. And so I'd be laying there and I'd watch, you know, I'd hear the the garage door opener, and then I'd see the lights go across the ceiling, and I'd be thinking, I'm going to die tonight. <laughs> and then I never died, obviously, but, yeah. <laughs> it could be a little rough at times. Yeah, that's putting it mildly. <laughs> now, as for me, if my father were alive today, he'd be in jail. <laughs> Because <laughs> that was back in the days when corporal punishment was used, and he used it. <laughs> so the next question says, Bev, was there anything that Michelle thought she got away with, but you knew all along? <laughs> I'm sure there were several things. And there may some th be some things now she's thinking about that I don't know. But the one thing that sticks out in my mind that we got such a big kick out of was that one time we weren't home from work yet or wherever. And she and her girlfriend decided to take our car out of the garage for a joyride. Well, the car had been dirty because it had been raining a lot and you know, it was kind of a cream color. Yeah. So the garage door was a two car garage, but it had two separate entries into the garage. So as she was backing out, she kind of scraped the car on uh, the one frame, which was blue, okay. And they went riding around, came back home, got a rag out, and well, kind of rubbed the you know, spot out. So then we get home later. And it was raining too. And it was still raining, yeah. And Bob and I go to grocery store somewhere, and it's like the radio is way up on a different channel than what we like. Everything's adjusted differently. And we go in the store, and as we're walking to the car, we go, what the heck? Here's this totally clean spot on the, the back fender of the car where they had rubbed it. 
So it's like, give away. So and the figured, car was wet when uh, it'd been oh in the garage all day. It shouldn't be wet. Now I was <coughs> I was thirteen or fourteen when that happened, so I didn't know how to drive. <laughs> Are you sure you weren't older than that? I'm positive. It was yeah, when I was probably. going to. I was in junior high when yeah. it happened. <laughs> But anyway, you, you guys figured that out that night, so I don't. I that's not a surprise to hear that you knew I did it, but right. but it is a funny story. I can't think of anything that would be a surprise, like that. I oh my gosh, I never knew that you knew that. I don't think so. Yeah, and, and I wasn't good at covering my tracks. No, she wasn't. I'm and, not a good. And liar. you don't have to say anything right now that that I'll say what. <laughs> Something that I didn't know that she wants to get off her chest. I don't think there's anything that you don't know, though, because I was not... I've never been a good liar. That's why, as an adult, I just... <laughs> maybe white lies or something, but, like, yeah. as far as the other kind of stuff, I I don't bother because I always get caught. Yeah, she did. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Bob used to always say. I don't know why Michelle does this stuff, because she always gets caught. <laughs> okay. Right. Number four. As adults... What is the one thing you admire about the other? You start. <laughs> what do I admire about you? Top one. <laughs> <laughs> I always have admired um, your independence, how strong you are. And most people think Bob takes such catering care of me that what will happen if, if something happens to him how will I take care of myself I took care of me and all my kids oh yeah you, for you many really, years by myself you really taught me not to put up with things not just lead by example but when things would happen to me you would always make sure they got taken care of like, okay, I'll give you an example. A hit man. There was a boy in junior high, and when I say junior high, I mean, let's see, it was eighth grade. He flashed me, and I wasn't ready to be flashed. Like, it was... For, I know what she's going to say. It was for no reason. No, I'm not going to say that. Okay. It was for no reason, though. Like, he just... And, and it wasn't... Because he was a boy. It was, <laughs> it was floppy. <laughs> Well, and he wasn't or not. So it was ugly, <laughs> really ugly, and it scared me and <laughs> petrified me. I mean, it, and and she she called the school and had a talk with the school and wanted them to address it and stuff. And I feel like a lot of parents, especially back then, would have just said just just deal with it. But I I felt really horrified, and and so she did say something. Or that's just one example. But mom always called and did something or stuck up for me or or sometimes she would make me go do something and it really pushed me to be strong and to be independent and here i am taking on the world one day at a time hey i never realized that yeah. never realized that i had that impression on you oh yeah or you didn't put up with my dad you left well i did for 20 years but i was only around there for were 11 reasons. of it yeah there were reasons but um at least i got her out of there yeah. So, okay, what, what you, okay. you don't admire anything about me. I admire <laughs> that she learned a lot. <laughs> no matter who she learned it from, she she was a lot? a lot more streetwise than I was in oh. my 20s, you know. <laughs> I mean, when she was in an abusive marriage, she got out of it within two years. She was out. <laughs> yes. So, uh... I admire her for that. I admire her ability to just really keep hanging in there with stuff. I mean, yeah, she'll get down sometimes, but she'll still hang in there, come up with ways to solve things, you know, and oh, I admire that uh, she found the kind of man that I found, finally. <laughs> it's true. really good to her. So uh, that's what I admire. Right, Zelda? <laughs> Zelda's just right here on her lap. <laughs> okay, what did you do for fun together during childhood or your teen years? What did we do for fun? We did a lot of stuff, mostly childhood. I'd take you kids on trips often. Those were always fun. Yeah, as long as the ex wasn't with us, we had a good time. <laughs> I um, <coughs> I remember 
in my teen years, there were a lot of, I mean, I was a teenager, so I had a lot of very difficult days. Oh, yes. And we both did. One thing that mom would always do, and I, I mean, I'm not saying that everybody should do this, but what you would do, that I always thought was fun, was um, you would take me, we'd go get like bras and panties, <laughs> yeah. and then we'd go to like Cinnabon and like have some sweets, and it always just picked up my mood quite a bit to just go be away from everyone and everything, go to the mall, oh, and we, we would people watch. Because she wasn't totally thrilled of the situation that we were in as far as the marriage and... You know, yeah. and having um, stepsisters and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I do that. One. But when you were a little kid, though, I tried to take them on. You know, we'd take road trips down to my mom and dad's in California all the time, and we we'd go to Disneyland, we'd go to Disney World. You know, different places like that. So I I tried. Okay. Even when I was sick, it was fun because I'd stay home with you, and we'd watch soap operas. And um, remember how what a how all all of them. What am I trying to say? Talk shows were all the rage back then. So mm -hmm. we'd watch soap operas and then talk shows. And we'd stay in bed all day. That was So it was kind of fun to be sick, which... <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not supposed and to be. And this sounds terrible, but... I used to hope they'd have snow days. So they could stay home with me, the kids. And actually... <laughs> anyway, next... Have you two ever been extremely upset with each other? <laughs> yeah. You have. Of course. I have never been extremely upset with you. Well, okay. <laughs> At one time when you were a teenager. And, I, got, and the, I got upset a lot when you were a teenager, yes. Oh, you did. I ran away a lot. Yeah, she got in a lot of trouble. You were upset the first time I got married. Oh my God, I sat there bawling through the whole wedding. Not happiness, anguish. Oh my tears. God, and I never cried in front of people. <laughs> I was even on meds, but I still. <laughs> just sobbing. <I> mean, <laughs> just so upset. She didn't have to get married either. It wasn't one of those situations. No, no, I didn't have to get married. I don't. Oh, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I, I don't know that I'll ever quite grasp. Why I did. I, I, I know that <laughs> at the time I kept thinking, everybody flew down here. Like, I can't do that to people. But the moral of the story is, go ahead and do it to people. Don't get married if you don't want to. And right. people will get over it, especially um, people will just go have fun and do something else. I, I think when you're younger, you don't realize how little you actually affect other people's lives. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> they don't care. Well, we were at a fun place. We were in Vegas. So we, yeah. You know. <laughs> went on and had fun otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else you want need to mention? I'm trying to think if I ever no, I can't really. Think. I was I was pretty mad at you when you got married. Oh, okay. And that was in Reno. <laughs> yeah. You know it's a pattern here, Vegas, Nevada's, Reno. <laughs> and now I live here and it's a lot of happy memories. But yes. yeah, I was really mad when you got married because I, I didn't want you to get married and I I was I was wanting to, to stay like a golden girls just me and you situation i didn't want to um and like you said there was step siblings involved and i didn't want to deal with that and i had to but you gotta understand too when when my kids were growing up it's like they were my spouse i did everything with my kids right so you know because there was a there was a vacancy open for a spouse type person to do things with me and stuff and so they filled it <laughs> You know, so all of a sudden, I'm choosing to hang around with a man, which was kind of foreign to her. <laughs> right. Instead of hanging Instead out of with her. Me. Right. So I understand, because I felt bad about some of that, too. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> I, oh, I really did. I even talked to counselors about it, and uh, the counselor said, well, look, she, she has seen a bad marriage. Let her see a good marriage, and then that way... Hopefully, hopefully, she will choose what kind of marriage is comfortable for her. And, uh, and she did end up in the kind of marriage. I mean, she's married to Bob Jr. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously they have some differences, but they're yeah. alike in a lot of basic, like the, the fundamental ways, they're very similar. Yes. <laughs> okay. What is Michelle's fondest memory of you? Ooh. 
of me. My fondest memory of her? We know it was when I got married. Yeah. Not, not that, that, <laughs> or when not she that got way. married. Um, <laughs> the first <gosh>. time? <laughs> well, I've, I've got a lot of them. Um, I'm trying to think. It, it, when I was a little girl, um, I have a lot of good memories of um, us driving places, you know, on the road trips, all the road trips we would do, going to see grandma and grandpa, going on hockey trips. I have a lot of memories of you reading to me when I was a little girl. You're thinking, I did? Yeah, <laughs> see, I don't feel like I read and, that much, too, and I always felt bad because I didn't. <laughs> and I, I think I, I, I think she, well, you did. I know you read Ramona to me, which was the big one that I'm really Ramona got me. hairdo. Yeah, that one really got me into reading. <laughs> and um, I think I was trying to get everybody to read to me. It, pretty young on, though, because I was just, had this, like, thirst for books. But even then, though, I loved the pictures before I knew how to read. But I wanted to, to know how to read so badly that I learned how to read pretty young. Because by the time I started kindergarten, I was already reading. I was always buying picture list books buying your books with, without yeah by myself. So yeah, you always bought me books that I wanted. Um, that was one thing I always knew. If I wanted, if I wanted to get stuff, I could always get books, which I thought was cool that you yeah. always let me get books. Yeah, those would um, always fit. And then my <laughs> my other big fond memory. It's kind of two things, but our two road trips together as adults. Oh, yeah. We. So when I was married to my second husband, I've been married three times. <laughs> when I was married to my second husband, he was in the Navy and he got transferred to Virginia. So she went with me on a road trip to Virginia. We were with my cat, Alvin, who passed away. Who was a human. He was amazing. And then when I moved to Vegas, I, I asked her if she wanted to do another road trip with me. And I think we had a better time coming to Vegas. We didn't have any arguments or anything. Oh, yeah. But, it was, it was um, kind of... And you were so sad that I was moving right, away back then. Right, Now I was but, happy. Just coming back on the West Coast. Yeah. But I still have so many good memories of both trips. We did. Though. We had some good times on that one. Yeah. So, and then even after we got here, you and I had so much fun here in Vegas together. Um, <laughs> another really happy memory I have is when... You and Bob and me and Brad met up here for a trip to Vegas before we had even decided to move here. It was on that trip we decided to move here. That's a really good memory, too. It was fun. Yeah, it was. Even being <laughs> sick afterwards was fun. <laughs> All righty, the last question is, what is our favorite dessert? Dessert or can't dessert? That's dessert, says dessert. dessert. All I can say is anything with sugar in it. I mean, I love everything, don't I? I guess for me it would be cheesecake, but I really like ice cream too. Hmm. Peppermint ice cream is my favorite. I like in my dad's. <laughs> right. And and her dad was kind of like my favorite person, I feel like, when I was a little kid. Like he was You were his too. <laughs> I was yeah. I wasn't that close with my dad. And whenever we would go down there, it was like he gave me that dad energy that I needed, I felt like. And yeah, we just adored each other, me and him. Mm -hmm. All the way until until he got dementia and forgot who I was. Yeah. <laughs> but until that point, we really just had a special bond and I always miss my favorite guy. Yeah. <laughs> of course, now Brad's my favorite guy. <laughs> okay, well that wraps up that part of the questions. It seems like there was more. Not from mine. Do you want me to look? Because I swear. Hold on. Just. Well, you're editing this out, right? Or I guess you're going to have to. I'm not going to edit out much. But I don't want to go over like uh, 25 minutes here. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll just play the game. Because I, I think there well, was a really game. This is just, you know, these little cards, the self-care and sex questions. So we'll just do a few of them. So we'll start with the green color, which is body science. <laughs> Body science? Okay. It's, can you describe gender dysphoria? Yeah. Can you? <laughs> I can know that I'm reading it. Are you, am I answering this? Is that what you're... Well, we give our opinions on it, I guess. The answer is feelings of conflict or distress a person may feel when their sex assigned at birth does not match their gender identity. Distress is greatly increased when a person is not supported at home or in their community. So, I'd say 
if any one of my kids had gender dysphoria, I'd try to support them. You yeah. Know, I, I, I don't care what a person is. Yeah. You know, who they want to be, how they want to dress, how they want to look. It's, I mean, sometimes it's fun to look at, but, <laughs> and it may laugh at first, but I'm still, I'm not criticizing the person or not liking them. Yeah, you were always very open-minded with us and um, comfortable about us being who we wanted to be, especially when we were younger. <laughs> okay. we You're like, oh, okay. We won't delve further. Okay, the second are the blue cards, which are self-care. What are three things that calm me down when I'm angry? What calms you down when you're angry? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck doing that. Right, um, that's why I'm laughing. Okay, cleaning really helps because I can put a lot of elbow grease into something and get my frustration out. Um, being alone. I find being around other people when I'm angry, it just makes it worse. Um, and probably having a cigarette, which is not a healthy thing to say, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> it makes me feel better when I'm really upset. Okay. What about you? Well, I'd have to say also being alone helps. Just uh, going and watching TV takes my mind off stuff. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know, trying to ignore it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's get to another color. Some of the more interesting. Okay. The light blue ones. Puberty. <laughs> How do you like to manage the hair on your body? <laughs> I like to shave it off. <laughs> the props or the things they're suggesting are leave it alone, shave it, wax it, dye it, or braid it. Ooh. I've never waxed anything before, have you? No, no just... Um, my uh, you know, oh my eyebrows my like eyebrows but no I haven't waxed though. anything on my body um, I tended to just leave it alone when I was younger I could shave you know I would shave it but let me tell you gals as you get older you don't grow as much hair I mean I don't even have to shave it on my pits anymore I don't have to shave my legs I haven't shaved my legs for years how about you you <laughs> still shave she shaves. So I've never been very hairy though, so it's no, not like we're I have not, to shave we're not a, a hairy bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what this color is. I think we already got, oh, that was the puberty. Okay, we already know the puberty. Let's try a pink one. That looks like a novel. <laughs> this is consent and decision making. Okay. Oh. Informed consent means that everyone is on the same page about what is to happen. What information do you need to know about a potential partner before you would feel comfortable consenting to sexual activity with them? What do I need Here's to know? Here's where the difference in ages may come out. <clears throat> well, you want me to give what their prompt is, just kind of their suggestion. Sure, because I'm. A partner's age, what method of birth control is being used. When they last got tested for STIs, what style of activity partners want to engage in? Okay. So uh, as far as that goes, I always knew the birth control because I was the one on it. Um, when I was single, I would ask about the um, STDs or STIs, but I also use condoms. So, And then um, I would ask, uh, I would make it... I, I don't know that it's so much what you might want to have happen, but I think it's very important to tell somebody things you're not comfortable with before intimacy occurs. Okay. What about you? Well, I come from another dinner generation. and uh, <laughs> You don't talk about anything. Obviously. <laughs> back then you didn't talk about it. Now, obviously, I didn't use birth control. Back then, no, 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 you were intentional. The first one wasn't. And within a month of first having sex with her daddy before marriage, ugh, I was pregnant. So I uh, didn't really have to use any of other methods or ask anything or even think of asking them. But when I was single again and going out, 
I don't know. I didn't care. Well, I did care what their age were. I didn't want it. There were guys that wanted to date me that were like in their early 20s, 21. I drew the line at that. I was, what, 38, 39. Um, I didn't have to use birth control because when I had her, I got my tubes tied, so I didn't have to worry about that. I don't know. I just didn't worry about that. Because usually I'd have been drinking, so I didn't care what, you know. <laughs> Being honest. So, uh, I don't know. Just all I, all I knew was... Uh, if I went to bed with a guy and I didn't like what I had, <laughs> I didn't go out with him again. I'm not going to waste my time on somebody who isn't very fun to be in bed with or, you know, the equipment isn't quite right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Well, this is talking about puberty and hair management again. That's that. boring. Right, that's why I put it back. Well, this is about healthy relationships. Okay. At what point does conflict become a problem for you? I have to say, it becomes a problem for me if he's not listening. That's what I was <laughs> If thinking. I point out the conflict and he doesn't change it, and Bob's one that if I point out a conflict, he's changed it. Sometimes to the point where... I don't care if he changed it. You know, I mean, oh, oh, here's an example. On the way down, we take turns playing each other's playlists of music. And he tends to record a whole album. So there's all these songs I don't like, or I've never heard of, that I have to listen to driving. Oh, you mean instead of a certain song, the whole album, the, the song's on? The whole album. No. Oh. So all I kept hearing on the way down was Reba McIntyre, right? Now, I like some of her songs, but after a while, you get tired of hearing them. And so I, I said, do you mind if I skip the ones of all these Rebas? No, I said, sure, go ahead. So then I find out the next day, that night, he deleted them all. <laughs> see, that, see, that's a thing where, that's kind of over overdone. You know, I didn't mean you had to delete them all. I just, you know, skipped them. <laughs> you? <laughs> um, so... I mean, over the years, we've just, I think we've got pretty good about communicating. I, uh, we tell each other how we feel, and then we just make it clear whether we want something done or not, and if so, what? <laughs> and, yes. so, and so, yeah. Um, and so, I, yeah, he doesn't delete all the songs off of something because I would tell right. him, don't, don't do that. Yeah, I'm I didn't tell him that. Um, but uh, if I feel like I'm not being heard or listened to, that, that would definitely be a problem because I like getting my way and I will just go take my ball and go live by myself if, You're right. if somebody doesn't care about my feelings. Well, well, here's what they say. Their prompt is when it's happening too frequently, when the outcome doesn't make you feel good. And like I say, my man kind of overdoes it on trying to make me feel good or, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, so, there's sometimes conflicts, though. The outcome isn't going to make you feel good. You just kind of move on. It's, I don't know that that's right. unhealthy if it doesn't feel good. <laughs> Body size. Yeah, that seems like a weird question. That's all we'll do today because <laughs> we're getting around 30 minutes and, and I don't like to keep these too long or else uh, my uploading screws up. Mm. So I hope you all enjoyed this, you know. Um, <laughs> maybe it wasn't what you expected it to be, you know. You maybe expected more, but this is just us, you know. This is how we are all the time. Right? <laughs> That's true. So remember... Uh, well, I don't, I'm not going to say remember to go watch Michelle's. <laughs> we no. could do a second one. No, um, I just don't know what to say. Do you have anything more to say? I don't. Okay, so <laughs> please comment below. Okay, wrong hand. See all the... Comment below. <laughs> share. Like, 
and subscribe. And I hope you've all enjoyed this. I really enjoyed being here with Michelle. Uh, we get to do this twice a year, sometimes three times if she comes down when Bob goes to Vegas for golf. So uh, that's it. Hope you're all having a good day. We, we love you all. You want to say anything? Bye. <laughs> Bye.